Soundcheck, good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the DTS Trading Room Friday, halfway through November, November 17th. Really didn't even strike me till today. Next week is uh, Thanksgiving. So the market's open a half day on Friday. We will be closed, though. I mean, you will find in this room, I'm generous with, you know, taking a holiday, closing it. I don't believe you should be sitting there trading a half day for the most part when you, you should be just enjoying yourself, whatever you Wherever you live, whatever you celebrate, you know, it is a, a market holiday time. I think you should take some time off. I don't I don't believe in sitting here on, you know, off days. It's too simple the rest of the time. So the room will be closed those two days without question. The stock market will be open a half day on Friday, just in case you want to do something on your own. Okay, let's get going for today. Market call. This is, I don't even have to say it if you've been in the room more than uh, 30 days. This is just a typical call today, which is going to be a call for uh, probably a fairly narrow day. We're going to have that neutral opening and chances are we'll stay fairly narrow. The best plan is if we fall initially and, uh, you know, kind of goof around all morning, find some support and then, and then grind back the rest of the day. That'll make it easiest because we want to favor bullish plays uh, as far as regular daily and hourly charts go. So it's easier to catch some entries. What's going to be a little tougher is if we rally initially and then kind of pull in. Now, I want to make a quick little comment. We are, I think, slowly starting to see that um, irrational exuberance phase. I want to be very careful, and I'm even going to do a market video and put it on my site just so I'm never, ever um, misunderstood. I, I, the big picture, big picture, you know, the huge picture, the 10-year rally, I have never, ever, ever once hesitated to have the needle 100% bullish, never change that. Again, that doesn't mean I haven't from time to time in the daily chart, look for pullbacks, that kind of thing. But the big, big picture is never, ever, I've never, ever called a top in 10 years, period, never even alluded to it. And I'm still not, so don't get crazy. But as you start to look for signs, I'm starting to see that little irrational exuberant stuff. And I'm seeing it like in the gaps, for one thing. A couple of things. After a wide range of our days, typically you digest for a day. And the last couple of times we've seen those, we continue to move higher without hesitation. And number two, the gaps are just nuts. I mean, the, the gap ups, the reason it's been hard to play this earnings season, in, in my view, is because you have to accept a huge gap is going to just continue to move higher without hesitation. And that's not the way it normally happens. I think that's a small little sign of that irrational exuberance, I like to call it, a la Greenspan many years ago where you're just seeing crazy buying starting without even hesitation or thought. It's going crazy. So it doesn't mean anything for right now. Just back your mind. It, it helps to add to the argument what does happen in the future. If we get a crazy run higher, is this the top or not? I'm just throwing that out there. But you're seeing that a lot today with, you know, I think there's only one gap up. I want to play bullish. There's a whole lot that may go higher and there's a whole lot I may play bullish on a pullback for the most part. I have probably six gap ups that are all short the rally if they rally type of thing, you know. So anyways, let's go through that. So there's there's the market call. It is it is what it is for today, a typical call for a day like today. The bullish, I just, I've already pre-sorted everything, sort of. I have some stuff on the hot list there, as you can see. I just want to quickly run through and put stuff on charts. The OTIC is still going to be a top watch for me, OTIC. You know, I've, I've played it three times, and I think between the three times I've made less than one hour. But that's because it hasn't moved yet, and I want to be there for the move. And I thought it was going to be yesterday. <laughs> that little consolidation looks so nice, but it didn't do it yet. So I, I want to be there for OTIC. It will be a top watch. It's on the hot list there. And then LYB, somebody asked yesterday, you know, why not take profits in LYB? Well, it's a defined trade. This was something I was entering as a quasi-swing trade. Hold end of the day, keep it swing. That's what the play was, period. So I didn't want to take one and a half, two hours off the table. I wanted to let it be a four-hour trade that day and then, you know, hold for a seven, eight, nine, ten hour swing trade. So that's just simply the plan. That's what it was. You can't take everything cheap profits and then expect to get some home runs. Sometimes you play for the home run. No harm done. Yesterday, LYV was break even. And I am going to look at that as a top watch today to get right back into it. Just no point in sitting there, you know, overnight with it with nothing going on. That's all it amounted to. So L L Y B and OTIC are a couple of top watches to me today, just off the daily chart period. Okay. There's some other things here that as if we pull back initially, I'll get more aggressive looking at some of these. I like this Abbott pullback on the hourly chart. I'll throw that on a thumbnail. I like the, the halo has been a little thin, but I like that hourly chart on a pullback. And if we rally out of the gates, these are going to be a little harder for me to like or to get into. There's CSTM we can look at coming over that base from yesterday after a bullish gap that didn't go anywhere. 
There's the G, which was a gap up and then did this reversal on the gap down. That's higher, but no specific entry this morning. There's IDTI, India Delta. And again, I'm just running through a list here. I'll summarize it in a minute. This is, you know, the result of, you know, a lot of work that goes into it. IDTI is, again, a decent, eh, I don't love that one as much. We'll look at that later. OC, Oscar Charlie. Again, a nice break above the base yesterday. Hourly consolidation. I like it over the top. Look at that. If we have a market pullback for the morning which we don't know. It could go either way. SRPT, Sierra Romeo, Papa Tango. Nice hourly chart, nice daily chart, higher over the base. We'll look at it later. Jabil, I'm thinking this is a favorite. I forgot what it was, though. Oh, yeah, just like the daily breaking above that. The weekly chart is still in place on Jabil, and you have breaking above the hourly yesterday, the, the daily. So, you know, possible entry, another one to look at if we have time this morning on a pullback. And this thing, I think it's finding a bottom there. Let's take a look at it later. Bearish, you know, Microsoft, I just think, is topped. And we'll continue to look at shorting that anytime the market's not taken off to the upside. This is, let me make that pre-market for you guys 8310 so this is i i want to put that on the hot list it's gapping down a little bit this could be a good play kind of out of the gates i like the setup here on microsoft if this gaps down a little bit goofs around or rallies a little bit there's a great stop up there i uh, i like the microsoft short is going to be a fave bit of, don't forget when you know we're this is a day trade it doesn't prevent me from saying things are bullish all around it doesn't mean that you move up every hour of every trading day all five days it means you have pullbacks and jerk out moves and you know we could we could fall for four hours this morning and still be bullish so microsoft is definitely a favorite play bitta dropped yesterday on a gap i'm going to throw this on a thumbnail to watch that lower in general there's a couple of decent watches here on the shorts um, amc is just a daily sell setup just dts sell setup just boom but nothing Fancy there at all. Just got to find the entry as an intraday trade to start it. It's not the best entry right there, so I'm going to watch that. There's the AON, I think is the same exact thing, right? No, AON is a little different. It's coming off a more bullish daily. Yeah, this one's tougher. Hourly chart can't play that this morning. Yeah, this one's a little tougher. We'll let the AON sit there and see what it does. CVX oil, of course. Put it on a thumbnail. I like it lower. Later today, though. HRB, if and only if, it negates that green bar from yesterday. This this is going to become like a Tony Orlando thing here if it gets back down under yesterday. But that, I'm not going to short the strength. you got to short the weakness on that one. And then PCG, Papa, Charlie, Golf. Yeah, you know, nice hourly chart looks lower. I'm not sure this is going to go much lower, though. Now that I'm looking at it, so just leave that there. So the hot list, without looking at the gaps yet... OTIC I got, OIB I got, and then I have SPB. I don't know if that should be a hot list or not. I don't think I can play it this morning. I can't play that this morning. That should just be on the bullish daily list. Got a little overzealous there, so that comes off the hot list. Can't play that now. EMR, though, that's the gap in bully yesterday. That's higher over the base. I'll just throw that on a thumbnail out here. It's got to come over the base, so it may not happen. And where are we? And then I put Walmart on here. It was gapping up earlier. Now it's not gapping down a little bit. And Walmart just I was looking for that to, to gap up and run higher. It's not doing that. So kind of back burner with Walmart. And that would be a short. I mean, it would be shorting on the run up higher. That nonstop rally from yesterday. Walmart was a, a, a wow yesterday. That gap was not crazy, but the run was crazy. You know, PayPal, wow. You know, that's our play from yesterday. 6R move. I, I, I put this in the little note I wrote to you guys yesterday. 6R move, and I probably got half of that, which, again, was my bad. Taking an opportune time, stall into lunch, but it barely stalled and it kept going. I, I wish I was out riding a bike yesterday. I would have made twice the money on that. But, yeah, Tom, anything's back that wasn't back two months ago. That's what I mean. You're, you're just seeing the, the sector rotation and um, it, it's good. It keeps the bull market going, but it's starting to accelerate in my view. I mean, look at Microsoft's chart, a lot of monthly chart. Look at this. Look at this real quick. You see what I mean? And you're seeing a lot of this, you know, that's not, I'm sorry, that's not going higher. It, it's just not going higher. I mean, it may retest that high. It may try to pop higher, but you know, you look at this chart, a month from now, you're going to look back and say, man, that was an obvious top. You know, it, it's just done. But it doesn't mean you short it this moment unless you have a really long-term perspective and you're willing to let it retest that high because the market's not at a top yet. But on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, shorting Microsoft until somebody decides to buy it again, good idea. 
All right, so that's that, that's that. And then Microsoft I'm gonna put as a top short watch, they just said, okay. And before I get to the gappers, let me run through then my hourly chart list, which I always love. Tiva, I'm not going to put on the hot list, but you know, Tiva is going to keep grinding higher. Facebook, I'm going to pass only because it's exactly the same chart as Baba, and I like Baba a little better, so I'm going to go down to Baba here in a minute. Disney is gapping down, isn't it, for some reason? No, not really. Okay. Thought I saw it. Oh, it is gapping down. I, I like the Disney chart here coming over the hourly, but let's leave that alone. AKS, God, I don't like steel, but man, that's a nice thing right there. I'm going to put that on the hot list. Put that on a thumbnail. I like AKS over that hourly base. That would be a good transition out of a stage one daily, etc. I had two. Oh, yeah, what was interesting about two? Two was also... Wait, why is that topping tail not showing? See that topping tail in the daily chart? 1598. Is that the first bar somewhere no no real quick you guys you guys have a topping tail on TWO or no I saw this hourly chart I liked it popping over the base consolidating I'll leave that alone for right now but was that that was like a three for two reversal or something how come they didn't correct on the chart not real okay all right well let's let's, let's look at it later typically stock stock splits are, are taken off the chart that day or the next day they're adjusted. So Baba, yeah, gosh, now I'm looking at an hourly chart. I can't really do Baba early either. So, you know, let's just Baba bullish daily chart list. And let's just look at that later if the market, you know, kind of has a tough morning. And then ECA, I'll throw it on a thumbnail to look. I like the ECA. And, I, and again, I'd like to pick up something swing today. That's why I'm going to be a little aggressive with LYB. I'm getting back into that. That's my favorite. Lima, Yankee, Bravo. MU, nice hourly chart. Same thing, they'll throw on a thumbnail. Let's see if we can pick that up on market weakness. And MO, this is a short I made some money on the top of the base, that red bar day or the topping tail day, but now it's reversing that. And look at the hourly chart, wants to come over the base. MO is going to be on a, on a chart for me as a fave. All right. For the gap down list, let's do the gap down list first because that's simple. WSM is going all the way to 47.50. So that's gonna make the hot list. I'll put a number three there just because we're in gaps now. WSM, WS, WS, oh, what is, WSM is a, as long as it stays significantly in that pivot, like closer to 47, it's going to be a tier two. And reasons the tier two that are gonna make me wait on the entry. So that's not gonna be an aggressive play. And VBLT, Victor Bravo Lima Tango, is going to open at 755. Put that in the hot list also. This is not as easy as it looks. I'm not that loving of that one as you may think I might be. I'll throw it on a chart. And EA. EA wasn't bad, right? EA was a decent gap down. Um, it's a decent tier three. Look at it later. I'll throw it on a thumbnail. All right, the gap ups are just not, not, not liking the gap ups at all. Foot locker to 40. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a special section on my charts for all of these. To, to me, everything's like foot locker. It's a mess. It could fall at the open. It could rally initially and fall. These I'm gonna look at finding shorts in all of these if they rally. So foot locker, I'm, I have this little way in my farm monitor. I have a little section I don't typically fill up unless I get overflow. I'm gonna put all of these gap ups there. Not all of them, but most of them. Foot locker is. It could go higher because of the big gap, but it's not something I would play bullish out of the gates. ANF is, see again, ANF, boy, 13, what a nice gap. It's going to 15. It looks nice on the weekly chart, though. So ANF will make the hot list bullish. This is, I think, the only, I remember when I went through these, there was one or two I didn't mind bullish, and ANF was a favorite bullish. So ANF just goes to the normal hot list, gets a bullish thumbnail. It's still a huge gap, though, but it goes out to the weekly chart as being bullish, so I'd love to get an entry on A&F bullishly. HIBB is just like Foot Locker. It's out of its mind. It's going to 1870. That's up here somewhere. SPLK is uh, going to 80-ish. Let's get some perspective on that daily chart. So look at, look at 80. I have to shrink the chart, shrink the chart. Look at this. Now, this would be the short of the day if it didn't have that daily chart pattern. It would have gapped after like six days ago. This would be the short of the day. As it is, though, I'm still liking more short than long. I'm going to put it on that little watch list over there. 
and get a confirming intraday entry because I'm not loving some of these as they are. Finnell is on here twice for some reason. Finnell is another, Finnell is, you know, obviously another footlocker. This is, where is this going to? Is this, oh, this hasn't really traded. This traded one trade. Let me check out, got a bid and offer here, what's going on. Because the one trade was at 987, which is really interesting. With the bids at nine, oh, the bids at 953 though. Could be a bullish one. And then you can get in the whole thing. You know, why is Foot Locker gapping off the chart? And this thing's barely gapping and not trading. But uh, you overthink it and you usually screw up your trading. So Finnell, I'll put on the bullish watch list. But this may not gap. Uh, it, it looks like it is. We got, we got a bid that shows a gap. But so that's two gap ups that I would be maybe bullish on. And we're almost done with our list. And it's only 923 doing good. There's a big list. So I really got organized and... Tried to crank through it here. Rost is uh, going to open at 70. Do Rost yet? No, that was that was ANF that looks like this. So got a nice consolidation. Um, it's not too crazy a gap. Take a look at the weekly chart. It looks like it's going to clear the weekly. Not a big deal. So I, I'm kind of neutral on Rost. I'm going to throw this in a middle chart and see if it gives some great intraday entry just so I can keep an eye on it. There's enough stuff out here today. I doubt I'm going to do any additional scanning, especially on a Friday. We probably just have a, there's a nice bunch of stuff here to look at. NCV, NVCR, November, Victor, Charlie, Romeo is going to open at 20-ish. Uh, that's in who knows category. I'm going to let that go. We can look at that later. That's one of those stocks that's got to prove itself. You know, given what I've seen lately, it probably goes higher sooner than later, but it's not a favorite. GPS, this is like a GPS store. And that's this gap. Uh, it's going to open at 29.29. Yeah, no clue. It's not bullish in and of itself, but it's a who knows. I'm going to leave it off the list there. BKE is uh, going to be a favorite short up to 21.20. This is going to be one of the ones to look at a short. And uh, yeah, I have DSW. Oh, it's, yeah. It's, oh, thanks, Ted. It's just not here. No, I, I let me see. I have to take a look at it. I forgot. I definitely saw DSW. I remember it for sure. AMAT, where is this going to open? It's 60.50. See, again, here, AMAT, I mean, it, oh, man, that's just, again, in that in-between category. AEO is another retail. So we have three retail on here, Ross, AEO, ANF, not to mention the, the foot stores, I guess, they're also retail. AEO is going to open at 14.60-ish. I think that's a pretty nice gap, right? Yeah, so here's a good one here on AEO, clearing the weekly. Again, it's it's a low tier two. When I say good these days, it's not great. It's just, whoops, wrong wrong list. It's okay. So AEO can go on a bullish thumbnail. And then time, uh, gosh, gapping up again is going to be a favorite short. I don't know how tradable this is going to be, though. It wasn't that tradable yesterday. Boy, it does a lot of volume. Yesterday it did. DKS, I think, is just a big... Uh, oh, yeah, this one, too. This is going to 29. Okay, well, this isn't crazy. I'm, I think DKS comes in, but it's not going to be the favorite one to look at short because it's not that bad of a bullish gap, actually. It's maybe, and, and, again, some of these that I put on the question mark list, which uh, I didn't put these on the hot list, they're the FL and the HIBB and the SPLK and the BIKE, and I put Dix there also. These are can go either way type of stocks, don't get me wrong, but they're in the category that they're not bullish enough for me to play bullishly out of the gates or on a pullback. So the only way I play this bullishly if they fall and then recover. And conversely, if they rally, they're all possible short watches. All right. And... And then W, uh, w uh, the other foot people, DSW, why? I just cheesed on this one, Tadris. I saw DSW somewhere, but I never saw this chart. I never clicked on it or something happened to it. Yeah, this, this, this can go, well, it certainly is on the gap up list for one thing. And I think this goes on the hot list as a bullish watch also. Which, bottom line, just kind of gives me too much stuff to look at. So let me look at the favorites here. we got a couple minutes to go. Oh, well, I know my favorites. I mean, I, I put a lot of stuff here. This is kind of the all-morning favorites list. This is not the usual what to watch at open. When I'm watching it open, I know my favorites. is just the simple old Microsoft short and watching the overly exuberant 
gaps to short if they run up. So that's a matter of seeing which ones they run up. So on charts, I have the FL, HIBB, SPLK, BKE, DKS. What did I say about G GPS? I said I was going to just let that go for right now because in between, I don't see this on a chart anywhere. This, this is, whoops, G. Oh, yeah, this is this thing. Yeah, okay. Go into 29 and a half. Yeah, that's in the fadeable category also. And so the one out of the gates is Microsoft for me. Now, I'm really hoping this will be a fun day if the market struggles initially. This will be a fun day if the market struggles initially. If we take off early, may have the trades on those overly gapping stocks. We're ready to go.